I would say that um, for me is since I don't agree with most of how society works, it gives me an opportunity to best step by step um, live in, in a different way and, and freeing us family from the system. And, um, and living in this house just makes you, you feel secure about it because you know that whatever happens, you still have this thing, this home that protects you, that will give you, what you your, your basic needs. And then that will uh, also, I'm also thinking about if really things go wrong or we can also have a family, you know, get, or, and a friends coming and we can like sustain them as well, you know, welcome them for a little while until things go back to normal. And uh, it's, it's a really great feeling as a mother, I think, to, to have this, this feeling of protection. Yeah, yeah this, this, this crisis for me, it's, it's not so much on the house, but it's mainly on the, it's more about high broads from people that still live in cities and that still have, you know, regular jobs and stuff. It's more about, okay, I've, we've already done the step towards the right direction. And, and it's like, we still have so much more to do and we still have to build this as a community and together. But at least we feel we, we, we've already started, you know, where people are, in, in a, most people are now kind of panicking, you know, they, they realize, okay, I'm still so dependent on the system that can break any day. And, uh, and how do I get out of here? And they want to change everything all at once. And for us, it's like we, you know, there was the house, now there's the food and there's also work, you know, we've tried to be more and money you know we try to live with less money so you're not as dependent on your job and so there's so many different areas where we're still depending on society and how how do we try to change this that's that's yeah. and there's many, many things we have to work on and this house and knowing that all of our basic needs are nearly taken care of it's, it's a amazing relief i was gonna ask you so do you think like and obviously this is all your, just your own personal opinion. Um, do you think this whole crisis is going to, is actually going to be changing people um, in a way that they go in the, you know, in a different direction? Or do you think this is just, you know, going to pass by and then people just go back to their, to, to their normal conventional lives? I don't know. I really think this, this, it's the beginning of something and of a, uh... You know, economically, it's going to have a huge effect. And people like, you know, when you, in France, there have been strikes and so many issues in the last few years about, you know, there's no more money. We have such a big debt and not this. And they can find, print more money and find another hundred billions to put back in society. And you're like, well, when we needed it before, you couldn't. And now all of a sudden you, so I think for people, these things are not going to be bearable anymore. They're just going to be like, okay, we want to be responsible for our lives and we don't want to count on people that don't want the best for us. And so I think, on, and also, I don't know how to judge this because I feel that we don't have the information to have an opinion about how they handle the disease and the crisis. And um, so I don't want to get into that, um, you know, medically. Uh, but still, I know most people don't think it was handled properly. Um, then, you know, in France, we, we have to have a paper to do anything. We cannot go for a walk more than, than a kilometer away from a house. Like it's, it's really a weird feeling of, of, you know, not being free anymore. And, um, it's, I, I think it's going to have a huge effect on people. And also, again, like you, you, you see, like there's no flour, there's no eggs anymore in the store. Um, all the little producer, they sold everything. They, they've never worked as hard in their entire lives because, which is a good thing, you know, people are going to the little producer and not to the big store. But I think all this is, is, is even like some of our friends that were not really into, not really worried about the, you know, they thought we were going way too far and they were, we were pessimistic. And now they, they come to us and they're like, wow, I realized this and that. And I'm, and I, I, I want to make big change in my life. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm always positive, so I, I want to believe that it's going to make a big change. 
and uh, from all of the people around me that I talk to, I really feel a huge impact. So I'm guessing it's, it's you know, global. Yeah, that's cool. Then, so, you, and you have seen, and like even, I mean, you live in a rural area there, but what's, what's been some of the like economic changes that you've seen there already? Um, I mean, you said that the small producers are working harder than, than they've ever had before. And I think that's something, you know, that's happening everywhere. Like everybody that was already in a way working with or on the land um, is getting more work than usual. But like, what's, you know, have you seen and like, what what are some other impacts of the economy that you've seen there in the area? Uh, well, what I what we saw and I find it's quite interesting is like we have lots of strawberries in the area, and yeah. uh, all the strawberry producer were panicked because they couldn't have workers anymore because they usually hire uh, workers from abroad that are super cheap and they they pay really badly, and they're not allowed to come anymore. So they're like, oh, we need we need you know hands to pick up the strawberries and they actually say we we won't be able to sell any strawberries because we have no pickers and you're like all right so if we don't pay people really badly to from abroad to come here we can it's not worth it to grow strawberries like it's such you know it's so wrong like it's and and having this in the paper i think it's great that people realize that this system doesn't work you know it can it's not sustainable and we cannot count on, on poor people to work for cheap so we can buy cheap strawberries. It just doesn't work like this. So um, I think that, that really helps to spread the message that people actually see physically that there's no strawberries or that, that they are so much more expensive this year and that you know it's not something that's supposed to be cheap. And we can say the same thing about many other produce. I'm just taking this example because it's, it's big in, in the area. Yeah, yeah, I've I've seen that here like a lot as well, and also you know the the people that were still critical of all this, you know, I, I don't know if you've experienced experienced the same, but the people that have always still been critical and just been like, oh, you know, you're just a bunch of hippies, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. they're now all coming around as well, and it kind of you know, I feel like sometimes you kind of have to. Um, control yourself to not say like, oh, I told you so, you know? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. But that, that's how, I, you know, I could, because I'm, I've been involved in the zero waste movement and I've been, uh, I, at first I was really trying to convince everyone and spreading the message and I was, and I couldn't help myself, but you know, cause I was, it was such a good thing to me that I wanted to share it. It came from a good intention, but the way that I was spreading it was not the right way. And it really put people down. And then I really tried to work on that and just say, okay, I'm not going to say anything. And I'm just going to just gonna encourage the people that come to me for advice. And, uh, and the result is so different. When it comes from your own experience, it's like growing food. You can read as many books as you want. You think you know, and then you start growing food and nothing goes the way you read it. It, you just have to practice if if you you know when i first moved here i read so much about how to to pick up wild food in the forest and stuff and i and i realized it just it never really stayed in my mind until the day that i actually picked something and ate it and and and, and once you do it once you never forget but you have to experience it and it's the same with transitioning from to a more sustainable lifestyle and until you actually do it yourself you you won't really understand how beneficial it can be Again, like living with nature it's just teaching you so much things and we've been raised to to live against nature and it's really hard to change until you have no choice and it's for us it's such an opportunity to live this way but until you have no choice you won't realize it it's it's a bit hard to to explain this feeling yeah, that's a, I think that's a great way of putting it, though. That's, you know, we are educated in a way to live against nature. And mm -hmm. now there is no choice anymore. No, you're totally right. So this is the entrance of the house. We have these little stairs um, here. Oh, maybe I should show the front of the house. Yeah, pretty similar to most airships. Yeah, so you have your solar panels and your hot water heater in the middle. There. Yes, in the yeah, yeah, 
the batteries on tops and the mm -hmm. two cool um, cooling thing. Uh, all right, so we're going inside the house. So we have a global model with two different entrances. We mainly use this one. Um, so here we take off our shoes and then we enter the greenhouse. So the greenhouse is no two no yeah two and a half years old and there's still so many experimenting going on so this is i'm really happy with what's growing now but i'm sure i can still do grow more and and learn more about um what to grow here because it's very different from outside mm -hmm. um so we have trying to to uh, adapt what i've learned from earthship biotechnology bio which is you know having some food, some plants, some trees, and trying to, to have a balance between all that. Uh, at first, I was really focused on food, 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 of course, and now I've, I've learned to put some flowers and some more colors in it, which is nice. And we have the aloe vera that's flowering at the moment, which is really nice. Um, this is the main room. So we have a, a kitchen here which was made uh, by hand by a, a friend. Uh, we have like a little bar here. Um, here we have the main table and then the sofa and lounge area. Uh, we've really tried not to have too many, too much furniture in the house, but try to integrate a lot of things. So for example, we have those shelves that are like inside the wall, like the, the um, tires would finish here. And instead of putting material inside, we left it like this to put a, a shelf. Uh, same for, for the bar over there. Instead of putting the fridge there and, and things that would make us lose some space, we chose to integrate things with the leftover woods we had from the, the build. Uh, then we have the, um, the little, uh, room with the filters which is super messy but here we decided to leave everything as it was so we can see the can walls we can still see the tires behind uh, we have the filters here and then we have a regular washing machine and a regular fridge and um and freezer and then some food storage um, so here it's not the nicest room because we left it, but it's very important when we do visits to show people how it was before and it really helps them understand. Mm -hmm. Then we enter uh, our daughter's Noya's room. She has a trapeze now on top of a bed, <laughs> which she loves. Um, we try to separate the room between the bed and then the playing room. Uh, also with um, with all the kiwi um kiwi stuff that we that we use for our clothes so there's less furniture as well uh, so she has a little play area here then we have our bathroom this room was the last room that we finished in the house so it's a bit more conventional because we were really uh sick with the with the everything taking time so we chose something a little faster, like just a regular glass wall for the shower, but it's still still nice. And of course we have the bottle wall. Then we go back into the greenhouse. She did a lot of drawing on the window, which it's nice. So we back into the greenhouse. We have a lot of seedlings here growing because it's that time of the year. We have the second entrance here that we use to go and see the chicken and to go into the garden. And then we have uh, the main bedroom with a bed, the first bathroom that we made. So you can see that it's more organic. This was a, um, this, this is a bottle wall, for example. And this wall is, was made with the leftover wood from the build as well. And we also integrated the shelves um and here we integrated also shelves to put our clothes uh instead of putting our clothes here as it was normally planned in the in the plants because we wanted a desk like a little office so we put a, just a desk and here we have the 
a dryer for the plants and a piano. <laughs> That's it. So let's go back to my face. <laughs> Hello. <laughs>